Welcome on Facebook and church. We're glad you're here today. A little cold out there for Florida, but uh, it'll get warmer eventually. Is this supposed to stay cold for another few days or what? Is it? Like an elevator. Oh, boy. Joel chapter 2. You know, it's, it's amazing that um, many uh, people don't get it. I, I looked at a lot of Bible expositors uh, this morning, and they don't really get it. This, is, this Joel chapter 2 is, is quoted. It's a prophecy for the New Testament in Acts chapter 2. We look at here, it starts out in verse 28, Joel chapter 2. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And their sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon thy servants and upon thy handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. So it, it's a prophecy of the filling of the Spirit coming in the New Testament. In fact, the book of Acts is actually the fulfillment of this prophecy and the filling of the Spirit. It's what's necessary for the work of God to go forward. And, of course, the the book of Acts could better be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit or the filling of the Spirit. Remember in Acts uh, chapter 1, in verse 8, it says, And ye shall be endued with power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. So this filling of the Holy Spirit was promised, and they were told by Jesus himself before he ascended to wait for the power. Don't do anything without the power. The power was, was here prophesied in Joel chapter 2 and was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2, what was called the day of Pentecost. And uh, it's a wonderful chapter, and, and I'm, I'm encouraging the people uh, today, uh, and you here that are in church and you that are on Facebook, to read Joel 2, which is part of our uh, Old Testament reading today, and also uh, to read uh, Acts chapter 2, which is a fulfillment of this prophecy of the filling of the Spirit. Nothing can be done in the work of God without the Holy Ghost and the filling of the Holy Ghost. We had the day of Pentecost. Remember what happened on the day of Pentecost? There were 3,000 saved and baptized and added to the church. How wonderful it is. Uh, it talks about it. Let's go to it. This Joel chapter 2 prophesies. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. We'll go there. I mean, a lot of these so-called smart Bible teachers and expositors, they don't even mention this. Verse 2, uh, I mean chapter 2 of Acts, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Remember that, they had 120 that was in the church at Jerusalem, and they met in the upper room, and they prayed and fasted, and they were waiting because God told them what? Don't do anything unless you have Holy Ghost power. Hey, sit up, man. Poke him. Hey. Well, it's, it's too bad. Sit up. Pay attention. You can go outside and lay in the cold if you want. You want to stay warm. Stay in here and pay attention, Charlie. Not thinking about guys dying. I'll fill this in here right away. And there's a guy that had been in here. He's come into the mission. Uh, I saw it. Uh, I saw it in the newspaper yesterday. Day before, he was sitting on the curb in Ormond Beach, rolled out in the street, truck run over and killed him. Homeless guy. He was in here. I've seen his picture in the paper. He'd been in here. That's why I want to keep you awake, child. I want, I want everybody to stay awake. I want everybody to stay awake in here. I don't want you to be sitting out on the curb and rolling in the street to have someone roll over and kill you and you ain't heard the truth. Amen? Yeah, they're dying all around. Your buddy died behind... Uh, uh, Charlie's buddy died behind... Uh, McDonald's the other day. So anyway. All right, Holy Ghost. 
verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. The Holy Ghost coming. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what we need today. I'm not leaving it up to the... I'm a Baptist preacher. I'm not leaving it just for the Pentecostal churches. Uh, I believe in the filling of the Holy Ghost. I don't believe in it the way that they teach it. Uh, I, believe that, I believe that the evidence of the filling of the Holy Ghost is not speaking in sub-gibberish. I believe the evidence of the filling of the Holy Ghost is a Pentecostal Holy Spirit power so you can win souls. By the way, here in Acts chapter 2, I'll show, I'll show it very clearly today. I like to show this every once in a while too. Uh, it says here, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak uh, with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All there were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own language. This doesn't talk about any kind of uh, heavenly gibberish. Any, anything that uh, don't, the Bible don't talk about. The Bible talks about known languages. You understand, known languages. That's what Bible tongues is known languages. Here's what it says here. They were all amazed, marvelled, saying one to another, "Behold, are not all these that speak Galileans? How they speak in our language, and how we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born." Parthians, Medes, Eliamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontius in Asia, Perga, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers in Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do all of them speak in our tongues the wonderful word. Known languages, that's Bible tongues. It's only mentioned a couple times in the Bible. They, they've, making, they've made denominations out of it. They have Pentecostal denominations, Assemblies of God. Now, my mom and dad were Assemblies of God missionaries. They were into that. They were into that, and uh, they were fooled by it. Now, they were saved. There's a lot of saved people that get involved in the tongues movement. But, uh, uh, by the way, uh, a, a lot of what is in the modern-day Pentecostal uh, movement borders on witchcraft. I believe, uh, I believe a lot of it is witchcraft. Because they're telling the future. You ain't supposed to know the future. You ain't supposed to know the future. I've had them come in here and they say, Oh, Pastor Varga, God told me something about you. And then he told me some foolishness. One of their pro they, ain't, they ain't. I get I get I get my I get my I get my prophecy and wisdom out of my King James Bible, amen. amen. Not out of some false prophet that comes in here. And trying to tell me some foolishness uh, about what's going to happen, and oh, and, and, you know these modern day prophets. I like a prophet like Joel. I preached on Hosea yesterday. I preached on Hosea yesterday, and uh, these prophets of the Bible. You, you know what they preached? Doom and gloom. <laughs> you know what these modern day prophets teach? Wealth and health. <laughs> That's a bunch of baloney. You're going to tell them, say, oh, you're going to be healed and you're going to be rich and just put your money in the offering plate here. They're a bunch of hustlers. You got that right. Mm -hmm. they driving uh, Mercedes and, and Rolls Royce and, and, uh, <laughs> and you're the sucker paying. <laughs> they do. They'll hustle you. <laughs> And I get my I get my visions out of the King James Bible, not from some false prophet. These modern day false prophets with their wealth and prosperity, uh, baloney. Forget it. Let's go on. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, verse fourteen, lifted up his voice and said to them, "Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, a seeing." Uh, but the third hour of the day. But uh, look, now here it tells it. But this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Now here, he's saying it was from the prophet Joel. That's what we just read in Joel chapter 2. 
I read about six or seven supposedly famous Bible expositors. They didn't even mention this. They're talking about some other foolishness. What's that to you people? I mean, she even tells you in Acts chapter 2, this is from the prophet Joel. He's talking about the end times filling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what he's talking about here. You know, we're in the age and dispensation of the fullness of the Holy Ghost. I can have Holy Ghost power. But not just a preacher. You can have Holy Ghost power. Everybody can have Holy Ghost power. We can be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what this is all about. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Lord. Did you know the last days started back in the New Testament, not today? Some people say, oh, this happened in Jerusalem. Oh, they, they'll have now they'll be making money, have you sent them their money. They say, oh, prophecies being fulfilled. Jerusalem uh, uh, is now uh, uh, the capital of Israel. Oh, this is prophesizing about, oh, shut up. This has been the last days for hundreds of years. It ain't got nothing to do with uh, uh, that, what's happening in Jerusalem. Now, I'm glad it's back, and Jerusalem is now the capital again. That's okay, but it has nothing to do. Who asked me? Was it you, Sandy? Did you ask me about that? Yeah, Sandy, my, one of our good church members come ask me about that. And says, what does this mean? It don't mean nothing. Uh, it, it don't mean nothing, but there'll be some money-grabbing preachers on the TV and in pulpits that are... They're going to tell you all about it. You just just give me some money I can stick in my pocket and we'll give you all. And no, forget it. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. We've been in the last days since the New Testament. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I love it. <coughs> Everybody here, if you're saved, you can be filled with the spirit. If you ain't saved, you need to get saved today. If you're saved out there in, in uh, Facebook land, Internet, you can be filled with the Spirit. Everybody saved can be filled with the Spirit. This is a day and the age and the fullness of the dispensation, the fullness of God prophesied by Joel and here given to us in the book of Acts. And this is the dispensation and the age of the fullness of the Spirit where every Christian can be full. Every Christian can win souls. Every Christian can have the victory. That's what this is talking about in in Joel chapter 2 and here in Acts. It is told, prophesied, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. That's what it says in Joel. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, capital S, blessed Holy Spirit of God. And they shall prophesy. What does it mean to prophesy? Tell forth the good news. Tell forth the good news. That's what it means to prophesy. Tell forth the good news. It doesn't mean like these phony, baloney, modern-day prophets. Like I say, they're, they're nigh on the witchcraft. They're fortune tellers. Stay away from them. <clears throat> they will tell you this. And, oh. And he, these stupid things I see. Do you ever get it on Facebook or I'll text you or something say, oh, uh, you text this to someone else and uh, and uh, God's going to do something wonderful for you. Look at that stupidity. If you don't, something bad's going to happen to you. Did you ever get some stupidity like that on the Facebook or Ted? That's idiots. I never would. Uh, don't you ever put stunt that forward or anything? Whoever sent you, that's an idiot. Some of you, some of you out there on Facebook... Some of you send me that baloney from Facebook. Don't be a fool. I mean, you might as well send that stupidity to someone else. Don't send it to me. This is a joke, and I'm breaking your stupid chain because it ain't no chain anyway. And if you and if you believe that kind of stupidity, <laughs> shame on you. I got a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn, too. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord. Amen. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That's what it's all about, getting people saved. That's what it's all about, have his Holy Spirit power. I want power on this preacher, so I preach and you get saved here in the church and you out there in, in Facebook land. That's what you need. You need to have the fullness of the Spirit. Glory to God. I'm glad. I've seen some of it. I need more of it. 
I've seen some Holy Ghost power. I want to see more. Praise God. We go on. Verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. Yes, he was the Son. He was the Savior. Among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Amen. Which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Verse 23. Acts 2. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Yeah. They slow the Savior. But you know what? He had to die. He died for you and I. He had to go to the cross. He had to shed his blood. There's no remission without the shedding of blood. All of the sacrifices of the Old Testament were done. They were done for that particular purpose, to pay for our sins. Oh, you with wicked cans have crucified and slain. Verse 24, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. He broke the pains of death. He rose from the grave. Up from the grave he arose. Praise God. I love it. My risen Savior, he died for me and shed his blood. He rose again. For the sins of the world, you that are here in church, some of you aren't saved. You've only told me you aren't saved. Some of you out on Facebook, you've never been saved. You go to church, you've been confirmed. You need to get born again, amen. amen. Verse 25, for David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, and I shall not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, I praise God, because I will not leave my soul in hell, neither shall I suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And Jesus Christ rose from the grave, and he lives and abides forever. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And because he lives, I can live. Amen. Because he died, because he rose, I can be saved and go to heaven. And anybody can, praise God. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance of presence. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, of his sepulcher is with us unto this day. David's great. Therefore, being a prophet, on knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he shall raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Uh, he was the seed of David, amen? And we have the lineage of Christ. We have uh, uh, from both, we have, we have the lineage coming down of Joseph and also coming down of Mary uh, and um, the uh, the lineage or, or his uh, coming down uh, as, uh, as a child of David, praise God. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God has sworn unto him uh, the fruit of his loins, he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ. Verse 31, I love it. And that his soul was not left in hell. He wasn't to stay in the grave. Amen. He rose the third day. Amen. That's your hope. Your hope, if you have any hope, is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It's not the Baptist church. It's not the Catholic church. It's not the Methodist church. It's hope in Christ. Amen. This Jesus hath God raised up. Wherefore, we're all witnesses. Praise God. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, he's there now exalted. He see that right hand of the Father. And having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, that Holy Ghost is down here now working on hearts. That Holy Ghost is down here on me now preaching as I try to bring people to Christ in this church and out there in Facebook. Shed forth uh, that ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into heaven, but he saith himself, The Lord saith unto my Lord, Sit down my right hand, amen, until I make the foes my footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Praise God. Poor Jews, they're there in Jerusalem now, and they're still at the wailing wall looking for a Savior. The Savior has come. Yeah, the Savior has come. I feel sorry for those poor Orthodox Jews at the wailing wall, wailing and looking for a Savior. He is here. He is risen. He has died. He's the seed of David. 
Praise God. When they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Are you asking that today? What about it, you that are on the front row, the next row? What about it, you that are in church? What about it, you that are out there in Facebook? Are you asking, what shall we do? Here it tells you what to do. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Change your mind about your sin. Repent. Amen. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, there are people that take this verse out of context and say that you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus to be saved. That's not true. The, the, the what called uh, they're called uh, Jesus only denomination. They say they have apostolic succession from uh, Peter in the Bible, and that they have to baptize you for you to be saved. That's not true. They use a King James Bible. They're against the alcohol. They're against Hollywood. Their women dress appropriately and they cover up and everything, but they're wrong. And uh, they, they, they tell you the wrong way to be. Baptizing you in the name of Jesus ain't going to save you. They said he got, they personally have put their hands on you and baptized you in the name of Jesus. Or, or you can't go to heaven. That's what they teach. And they use Acts 2.38. That's the verse they use falsely. But you can believe. For the promise is unto you, if you believe, your children, and all them that are far off. That's us, you and I, right here today. And as many as the Lord God shall call. With many words they testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same were added to them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 got saved and baptized that day. Like Ada was baptized here the week before last. And she got saved at the door here one day. She was heartbroken. And in sin and needed help and she trusted Christ and got saved others that are here have been saved in this church some of you that are out there uh, Eugene that's in Texas now he was saved at this church and been following God been a faithful servant of Jesus Christ God bless you Eugene I'm proud of you and you stand for Christ uh, uh, he's a soldier of the cross God bless you Eugene I'm glad for that there in Texas you win souls over there like you did here when you were in uh, in Daytona Beach Listen, dear one, Joel chapter 2, it was forecasting what would happen in Acts chapter 2 and what would happen today, the filling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and I was saved April 4th, 1969. Has the Holy Ghost convicted you and have you repented and been saved? How many of you have been saved in here? You've been saved. God bless you. Some of you still need to be saved here in the church. How about you in Facebook? You've been saved. I see Eugene's hand up out there and Eugene saying, praise the Lord. He probably sent up some hearts or something here and thumbs up or something. <laughs> he usually does that. Bless you. Bless you, Eugene and others. Yeah. Praise God. I've been saved. You can be saved. Is God speaking to your heart? If you don't know you're going to heaven, repent, as it says in Acts 2.38. Repent. Call upon God. Have remission of your sins. Be born again. We're going to pray. Church, let's pray. Facebook, let's pray. Lord, thank you. A wonderful prophecy of Joel. And as it was, as Peter preached this blockbuster sermon in Acts chapter 2, he said this was prophesied by the, by the prophet Joel that the Holy Ghost power would come. And everybody could be saved, be filled with the Spirit. You say, I've been saved. That's good. Are you full of the Spirit? Get filled with the Spirit. If ye then being evil know how to get good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask? Uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, in Luke eleven thirteen, you can be filled with the Spirit. Just ask for it, dear Christian friend. Be Holy Ghost filled and win souls. You need to be saved today. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. Repent, you that are in church that aren't saved, you that are in Facebook. Pray this sinner's prayer with me. Repent, turn from your sins. Dear Lord Jesus, I know you died for me and you shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross. 
and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. You're here in church. You say, Pastor, I wasn't saved, but I got saved today. I just asked Jesus to save me. I didn't know I was saved, but I asked him to save me today. Would you slip your hand up? Anybody here in church today, you got saved? Anybody? Amen. Amen. How about you out there on Facebook? Have you been saved? Did you get saved today? Let me know about it. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for decisions that have been made for thee. Bless now. Thank you for the food you provide for us. Help us have, we that are saved, help us to have a day of rejoicing, filled with the Spirit, telling others about the Savior. Thank you for these ones that have just been saved today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to sign off Facebook now. God bless you. Send this to someone else out there on Facebook so they can hear about it. I'm going to sign off now. We'll talk to you tonight. we got church tonight. I'll be on Facebook tonight a little after 6 o'clock. Talk to you later if you're available. Bye.